The opening ceremony of the 2014 World Men's Curling Championship marked a historic occasion for two reasons. Not only was this the first ever men's world curling event brought into the Asia-Pacific, but at Beijing's capital indoor gymnasium, this was also the first ever global curling event hosted by China. The lineup saw the host China joined by current world number one Canada and reigning world champion Sweden along with nine others. And for China, while the women have previously won a world championship back in 2009, the men skippered by Liu Roy haven't quite been able to repeat their continental success on the global stage. So the final preparations just going through before Switzerland and Russia kick off proceedings. That's followed by US and the Czech Republic, then Germany playing the host nation China and Scotland playing defending world champion Sweden. Quite a bit riding here for a number of sides actually. Switzerland, they've sent a very young side so they'll want to prove something. Sweden just coming off the back of a bronze medal finish at Sochi so they'll want something to prove as well. It's a different side too so they want to make their mark and China obviously what more do you need to say. This is the first ever world championships being held in this country so they're playing for more than just honours. There's pride involved here as well. But for those watching, this was more than just about the results. It was a chance to soak up a competition taking center stage in China for the very first time. And we thought this was also the perfect opportunity to have a chat about that with the head of the sport's world governing body. And she happens to not just be the first female head of the World Curling Federation, but of any Olympic winter sports body ever. WCF President Kate Caithness. Um, Kate, this is the first ever curling event in China itself. Um, what do you make of the event so far? I know it's still early days, but first impressions? Oh, they were excellent. Really, really happy. Um, the stadium, they've dressed it beautifully, and the crowds are first draw, and you can see how many people are here, so very happy. It's interesting you mentioned the crowd. Um, China not very well known for its curling uh, pedigree or even interest levels. Do you think tournaments like these, possibly more in the future, could push up the level of interest? And I mean, right now the stadium is possibly at half capacity, but maybe in the future can we expect full houses maybe? Well, I think if this is going out on television, this will certainly happen. Do you know that we were in Sochi uh, for the Winter Olympics and the viewing figures we had from China were 660 million. So obviously people in China like our sport. I was in Shanghai in November and went to see the local university and the interest there is huge. I know Harbin's a big, a big place for curling, but here in Beijing, I know as soon as the people get to know and like our sport, it's going to go crazy. Our numbers are going to go through the roof. And with scenes like these, you can only imagine whatever the results end up being, Chinese curling fans already have a reason to remember this world championship for some time to come. This is Aidan Barua for East West Sports on BOM.